Welcome to Last Night, your sci-fi recap show. The Sci-Fi Channel is one step closer to fully switching over its powerful Monday programming block, with the season finale of Being Human next week and the season finale of Lost Girl a couple of weeks after. Returning to Last Night to help me recap the most recent episodes of each is the king of the supernatural, Murray Williams. It's great to be back, Liv. Your forays into the supernatural are usually ghosts and spirits, so you must be pleased that Sally on Being Human is back into full ghost form. Not to sound cynical, but it's where the whole season has been going all along, as has Josh's return to wolf form. The show's title has always been an ironic choice of words. It was never meant to be literal. I think we all sort of knew what you knew, in a way. But they certainly have handled it in an interesting way. Sally has always been a tragic character, and her time as a zombie has given us a chance to see just what kind of trials she can handle when she isn't just a spirit floating around the house. I agree it's good to let characters have some room for growth, to do more than just the same old thing every week. And I have enjoyed seeing Josh struggle with actually being human while having a werewolf girlfriend and then turning back into a werewolf, as I have watching Sally take on the challenges she has. In fact, Aiden is the only one who hasn't been anything but a vampire since this show began. Thoughts true. On the other hand, the way in which Sally and Josh have gone from one state to another and back again has allowed for the introduction of some interesting, and terrifying, villains to this world of theirs. In Josh's case, we got to see both Ray and even Liam for a bit in last night's episode. For Sally, Donna the Witch has become quite the intimidating character, whether she's actually on screen or not. Josh's confrontation with Ray was a nice addition to the episode. It gave him a chance to address some lingering guilt he had over their last last encounter. Now of course, his conscience is clear on the matter. I don't think I'd call it entirely clear. Josh always has some doubt hanging around. It's what makes him such a good guy. Perhaps. But the one to watch out for is Sally. When she was a ghost before, her conflicted feelings turned her into the Reaper, made her possess people just so she could feel again. And now, she has, felt again. Plus the guilt of knowing she had a hand in feeding her friends to Donna before she figured out what exactly was going on and how to stop it. That and we saw in the preview for next week that Donna is along for the ride this time. You can bet it's not something Donna will soon let her forget. Speaking of unforgettable though, the wedding of Josh and Nor finally took place. It looked for a second as if they were going to postpone it in the wake of the battle against Donna and Ray but Josh's sister Emily made sure it happened last night. You know, I've always loved weddings. Especially when it's a werewolf wedding being officiated by a vampire with a ghost maid of honor and a lesbian best man. One of those things is not like the other. It's a shame Kenny couldn't attend though, since he was downstairs turning into a hybrid werewolf vampire. Not the kind from Underworld unfortunately. It's ironic actually. They thought they had the key to prolonging the vampire race in the werewolf blood they were using, but in feeding off werewolves, they may have sealed their own fate. Good use of the word irony there. In season 4 they'll need a cure for the cure. Let's talk about Lost Girl now. Does it seem to you the show is becoming a little, disjointed, now that everything is finally starting to coalesce? Nice use of opposites there, disjointed and coalesce. Lost Girl is trying to respond to fan feedback, which is not a bad thing. But when they keep changing Lauren's backstory to make her more interesting, which it seems they are trying to do, it actually makes her less interesting and more frustrating. Another good example of irony. I can tell you, the moment Isaac showed up and said he'd paid his obscenely expensive lawyers to look into her background, I knew he was bad news and I wouldn't have gone anywhere with him no matter what he said at that point. They just don't seem to know what they want to do with her character. They know they want to keep her, that much is clear, and they know people are starting to lose interest in her, but as a couple, she and Bo have pretty much run their course. 
Anyone who's been in a relationship will tell you there comes a point when you need to decide if it's going to work, or if it should be allowed to end. In my humble opinion, Bo and Lauren should be allowed to end. It is possible they're preparing to do just that. After all, if Isaac is up to something, then it will certainly involve using Lauren as a hostage slash bargaining chip. If they do get rid of Lauren, this would be the perfect way to do it. Agreed. The question at that point becomes, what would Bo do at that point? Dyson or Tom's in? It's a little soon to be asking that question. Bo is just a bit more sensitive than that. And she really does love Lauren. Yes, but she is still a succubus. At the very least, she'll go on a bender or two, and I can see how Tim Zinn would be willing to offer herself as consolation. I don't know what's worse, you saying that, or the fact that I agree with you. Let's talk about the mass grave that Tim Zinn and Dyson found. It's oddly less creepy than what we just discussed. I'm sort of confused by the mass grave slash dumping ground actually. It's under surveillance. What's the point of that? It would be pretty obvious if someone like Dyson happened to find it. And why bother burying the bodies at all? To cover up Fay on Fay violence. If they weren't supposed to be found then why bother burying them? Why not destroy the bodies, or at least make them unrecognizable? This is one of those times where a scene is really creepy and really effective on first viewing but sort of falls apart when you start thinking about it. Unfortunately, Lost Girl seems to be having more of those types of scenes lately. I don't know that I'd go that far. We only just found the grave after all, and there are still two more episodes left this season. We should wait until we have more answers before we start asking more questions. I've been doing that all season live, and Lost Girl is leaving me with more questions and fewer answers than Lost itself did. Then I guess we'll just have to have you on next week to see if that changes. I look forward to it. Thank you for joining me Murray. My pleasure Liv, as always. And thanks to all of you for watching last night.